Hello, beautiful people. 10 days ago, I bottled two of my very first batches of Perry. I have them poured out right in front of me. One batch I made using whole fruit that I juiced myself and another made from store-bought juice made from concentrate. Perry is very similar to cider, except it's made with pears instead of apples. Perry is not a very common beverage to find on the shelves, so of course I'm here to show you how to make your very own batch of Perry at home. I'll cover the equipment that you need, the very basic process and steps that you'll use to make your own Perry, and then I have my very young Perry poured out in front of me so that I can share with you what to expect. So let's go ahead and get on into it. So my process for making Perry is exactly the same as my process for making cider. Making Perry from whole fruit is a little bit different than making it from store-bought juice because your clearing time is going to be a little bit longer, whereas your store-bought juice Perry is going to be a very quick, fermentation and clearing time. I think that it's important before I get into the equipment and the process that I let you guys know what I think of the two Perrys that I've made. That way you can decide which one you wanna go with. So this is the Perry that I made with whole fruit. You can obviously see it's a lot murkier, a lot cloudier than the Perry that I made from concentrate. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. This has been bottled for 10 days and it has carbonated quite well. So the Perry from Whole Fruit has a very well-rounded, full flavor, even though it is very young. Let's go ahead and taste the Perry from Concentrate. The Perry from Concentrate has a good flavor, it has a good bouquet, but it does not have the same mouthfeel that the Perry from Whole Fruit has. I can definitely tell that because I juiced my own pears that there's a lot more complexity in this beverage and it still has a little bit of aging to do. But making Perry from store-bought juice was definitely a lot easier. So when deciding on how you wanna start your Perry, here's what you have to think about. Do you care about the overall flavor or do you care about how simple and easy it is? Neither answer is wrong, but it's completely up to you. If you go the way of whole fruit, you're going to be cutting and juicing your pears. If you go the way of store-bought juice, you avoid all of the mess, but you do miss out on some of the flavor. So now that I gave you guys something to think about, let's go on into the method and the ingredients of making your very own Perry at home. I've been wanting to make my own Perry for a while now, so whenever pear season came around, I knew that I needed to go with whole fruit because go big or go home. So whenever pears became available at the local farmer's market, I made sure to grab a bunch that I could juice. Juicing the pears wasn't too difficult because I do have a fruit juicer, so all I had to do was wash the pears, cut them up, put them into the juicer, and collect the juice. Make sure to remember whenever you're using any kind of equipment in home brewing that you want to sanitize it, even if it's just the juicing process. So I didn't get quite enough juice to make an entire gallon, so I used a little bit less than half a gallon of pear juice, but I had a carboy that was the perfect size, and so I filled her up and got it ready to ferment. I made sure to take a specific gravity reading, and this pear juice only ended up measuring out about 1.042. One thing to remember when it comes to pears is pears have something called non-fermentable sugars. Some of the sugars that make up the sweetness of the pear are actually sucralose, which does not ferment. So you should not expect your specific gravity to ferment all the way down like you're used to. Once I had my juice in my sanitized carboy, I added a quarter teaspoon of Safeel SO4 ale yeast. If you have a gallon of pear juice, you want to use a half of a teaspoon of Safe Ale SO4 Ale yeast. If there's another yeast you prefer to use while making ciders, you probably want to use that same yeast for Perry. And the process so far really was that simple. All I did was collect the pears, wash them, cut them, juice them, I added them to a sanitized carboy, and I added some yeast and let fermentation begin. At this point, I haven't even thought about fermenting store-bought juice until I racked this Perry over. I did have some extra fresh pear juice set aside, but it ended up getting mold on it, so I knew that I needed to find another way, and so I ended up going to Walmart, getting some pear juice from Concentrate, and bringing it home. 
Whenever I racked my first batch over, I ended up filling it the rest of the way with pear juice. That way there wasn't too much headspace in the carboy. And since I already had some pear juice, I figured I might as well try another batch using that juice from concentrate. The steps were exactly the same, except I didn't have to juice any pears. I sanitized all of my equipment. I used the same size carboy. I added my pear juice to my sanitized carboy, and then I added a quarter teaspoon of Safe Ale SO4 Ale yeast. I added the airlock and let it ferment. So now I had two batches of perry fermenting. With ciders and perries, you really don't need to let them ferment in the carboy for too long. For my specific process, I plan on carbonating my perry in the bottle. I also let my ciders and perries bottle age as well. So the only thing that I was waiting for was for me to rack my perry over and then to not see too much sediment gathering on the bottom. For both of my perries, I only racked them over one time before I bottled them. After the perry from whole fruit sat for about a month and the perry from concentrate sat for about two weeks, I could see that they were ready to be bottled. For me personally, it's really important that my perries and ciders have a proper amount of carbonation. I achieved this carbonation by adding a little bit of extra sugar into my perry before I bottle it. So once my perries were both completely done fermenting, I racked them over to a brand new carboy. Then for every one gallon of perry, I add one cup of pear juice. Now I had less than a gallon of perry, so I only did a half a cup of pear juice, but I add the juice, give it a mix, and then I bottle it. This time around, I bottled my perry using a racking cane and a bottle wand. The bottle wand makes it super easy to fill the bottle all the way up, and then once it overflows just a little bit, I pull the bottle wand out and it leaves the perfect amount of headspace. Headspace matters for carbonation. If there's too much or too little headspace, it will not carbonate properly. Same goes for the amount of sugar that you add. Too much sugar, too much carbonation. Not enough sugar, not enough carbonation. So in a relatively short time span, I was able to get two batches of Perry put together, bottled and carbonated, and now they're sitting here in front of me today. The key takeaways that I wanna leave with you is that whole fruit really does make a difference. Whether you're pressing your own apples, whether you're pressing pears, it adds a level of complexity that you will not get from concentrate. Whenever they make a juice concentrate, they really do strip away a lot of the things that give the juice its flavor. And whenever you ferment it, it's not gonna be added back to it. Your juice from concentrate will clear very easily, but it will lack the flavor that the juice from whole fruit has. I know that I mentioned a lot and I went from whole fruit to concentrate and back and forth. So if there was ever any confusion about what to do or what you need, I made sure to put a whole equipment list, ingredient list, and method list down in the description below. For me, the clear winner is the perry from whole fruit. The more bitter and tanniny a pear is, the more complexity and flavor it is going to have after fermentation. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Making your very own Perry at home really is not that complicated. You need a fermentation vessel, you need some pear juice, you need some yeast and thyme. I really hope that you give it a shot because Perry is a very unique beverage that you don't find out in the wild very often. Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Daniel and welcome to my channel. I'm so glad that you beautiful people could hang out while I kind of go over how I make Perry at home using some very basic ingredients and basic steps. If you had a good time watching this video, I hope you hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe for future videos. I can't wait to see what we're doing next time, but until then, happy brewing.